Hey, what's up? Dean C. Performance. We are at the shop and end of the day. It's dark out. Getting ready to head out and figured I'd do a quick video on the 63 C10. Um, this truck was brought in basically another shop, a couple other shops worked on it and just kind of never finished it, but it got painted and everything. Um, then it was supposed to get wired and Whatever happened, uh, the truck is here, which I'm super stoked with. So yesterday I went ahead and I got the motor in it and fitted up the headers, make sure they fit, um, which everything worked. Put the drive shaft in it and noticed there's some parts missing, which I have to find if I have them, like get them on, whatever. Um, but we are making progress. I got the battery in it, which this is the battery we had. And then I had this hold down, like a J-hook style hold down. I got to cut the bolts down on it. Um, I got to get the accessories off the front. We're keeping the alternator and the water pump. Um, but we're making a little bit of progress. And then today... I went ahead and on the fuel tank, I did the compression line. Um, forgot my light in there. I'm most likely going to pull the sending unit out. Whoops. Pull the sending unit out and look in the tank. Make sure the tank is clean. It looks clean from the outside, but I can smell gas in there. So um, we have uh, from LMC Truck Classic Update Kit. American auto wire and this is for this is yeah five zero zero five six zero it's classic update kit 60 to 66 Chevy truck so it should be pretty much like a kind of a plug-and-play you can see like all the connectors most most of the wires are already terminated um, which is good so you don't have to go through and put all the ends on them um, but this is kind of how they left the truck. So it's got the fuse box with the adapter panel. They mounted it and that's about all they did with it. Um, and I think it's like blade style fuses. I don't even know if the fuses are in here. But it, it's pretty much got everything in this box. All the... I'm assuming these are like headlight plugs or taillight plugs. Um, got a couple of mega fuses that go in it. Kind of went through the kit, but I didn't really fully go through it because there's parts that are pulled out and kind of laid in here. And um, I don't see the fuses, but. Yeah, fuse kit flashers. Yeah, there. So gives you all the like newer blade style fuses. So that's pretty cool. Um, truck super clean inside. I mean, it's a mess right now because all the parts that are in here. But um, it's got AC, uh, which is right there. But this is kind of the condition that the other shops left everything in. Um, the engine was rebuilt. And they left like a, I don't know, 20 year old thermostat in it. I just, I don't understand why and how shops do these things. Um, but this is kind of how they do stuff. So this is the engine that came out of it over here. It's a, just a regular run of the mill, 350, two bolt main. And I pulled it just on the safe side. You can see there's cross hatches in it, but you see the cylinder walls are all painted. Um, which is always kind of a red flag to me. And then when I went to turn it over by hand, no spark plugs in it, nothing. You could not turn this motor over. So I fought to get it turned over to get the flywheel bolts out or the torque converter bolts, got them out, got the motor out, pulled the pan off of it, the heads and everything off of it and 
went to knock one of the pistons out which typically once you get it off you can almost push it out by hand like it, it's rough but you could push it out by hand i i had to beat these pistons out um and i, I got two of them out so this is a sign of like you just don't do you can see the wrist pin is sandblasted and just the very edge of it is shiny the whole wrist pin should be shiny it, it shouldn't have been sandblasted they sandblasted the rods the pistons just everything they just sandblasted everything but i i don't know even the engine builder um has no clue why this doesn't fit in the cylinder um it literally like there's points it'll go to and then it'll stop and then like man it's just not normal so we disassembled it the camshaft is like a cheap auto zone replacement was put in bone dry um you can even see on the journal right there there's some sort of weird almost like a water kind of mark where they polish the journal or something um so pretty much it's all garbage um it's not worth the money to put into this motor over four thousand dollars the heads being black on top of an orange block with an orange intake it's just real weird um they reused all the valve springs you know it, it's just it's a shame that people do this stuff um but to go through the entire thing if the crank rods are good and pistons are good um to bore it hone it and do all that stuff it was just astronomically expensive for what it is um and the block was shot peened which means it's tiny tiny balls of steel and they go everywhere they go into all the oil galleys and everything um these square head plugs are like the stock plugs so they were never pulled out the front ones that match down there are like freeze plugs so that means they were never pulled out these are your oil galleys um so like the entire motor is probably filled with this shot peen little balls of steel which basically once the oil runs through the motor it'll get into the pan suck up into the oil pump it'll destroy the oil pump destroy all the bearings and the motor would be garbage so for the price um this is actually jeff's small block so this is a 355 that was rebuilt with hyper eutectic pistons uh it's got summit 170 cc aluminum heads high rise intake um it's got the sniper like a hyper spark distributor hyper spark coil hyper spark cdi it's got the holly sniper um like the base kit to it but this was on his truck um in his truck we did the cam in this in in the s10 video um and this is a good rowdy motor so for the money that he paid for this entire setup it was cheaper than getting that rebuilt so you know he he got this whole setup um i know it runs good i've had it here several times running good um the radiator is new it's like a plastic end tank radiator which i'm not a fan of but you know it's a new radiator um i ran the transmission lines i i changed the fittings i don't know if we could see them way way down in there way down in there i changed the fittings to an and i ran and made the two an lines uh one of them fell but they're both there and then i ordered the adapters the quarter inch mpt the 6an lines um the starters in it uh, i got all the plug wires on it today uh, yeah i mean little by little kind of getting it done um underneath you can see the drive shafts in it uh it's not bolted in the rear like i said i gotta find the u clamps that hold it in um and then once i did the motor i found that the transmission mount right there is actually blown apart 
So I'll have to change that um, and see what's going on. But I did the headers, uh, took the collectors and reduced it down the two and a half from the three. And I welded on the, where are you? Right there, I welded on the V-band um, to both sides. Uh, the other side's over there. So that'll be good. I just got to get, um, I got to get some bends and we're going to build the exhaust to come back. Um, it's weird because like you can go above this cross member but then you can't go through that cross member there's nowhere to go through it so at first I thought wow the headers hang low but that it's kind of how they have to be um, and I may end up which I mean is almost pointless but I had the initial thought to curve it up and above the frame and then go through this cross member but I don't think that's going to be you know the best option to do um, so I have to talk to him uh, we're kind of giving him a little bit a uh, little bit of a surprise with the headers uh, he had like block stugger block hugger style which are in the back of the truck he had those and they just they don't fit good um, and where it on the driver's side, I believe there's like a part of the frame that they cut the exhaust. They cut an angle in the pipe and cut another angle in the bend and welded it together. So it, it start, oh, that light is bright. It starts to take a bend and then all of a sudden it goes straight. And I, I'm not a fan of that stuff. Um, so if you ask me to work on something, you know, I want it to be professional and have nice mandrel bends. So he has no clue. Um, I went ahead and got him polished stainless headers, long tube headers. Um, I have a bunch of polished stainless two and a half inch tubing. Go ahead and basically make them an, exo an, an entire exhaust kit as kind of a thank you. Um, I do that with every customer. I try and do as much as I can um, within reason, obviously, to kind of give a thank you um, for giving me the work. I, I do appreciate every one of my customers. I appreciate, you know, everybody on YouTube. We're at 400 subscribers, which is awesome, uh, and it's still going up. But for now, on the 63, I'll be gone for a few days. But when I come back, I plan on getting this thing wired up and fired up. Um, and we have a surprise for the owner, uh, Salvador. So hopefully his son, Salvador, Chavo, with this uh, silver C10, hopefully he doesn't ruin the surprise. Um, good dude. So he, he kind of knows what, what's coming. So for now, I appreciate you watching. Do me a favor, hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, leave me a comment. What do you think of the 63? Have a good day.